The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you, and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you, and in a little while the world will no longer see me. But you will see me, because I live, and you will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. For those of us who find ourselves using the word retirement in daily conversation, we might find ourselves bumping into that thousand-pound elephant in the room called estate planning. Some of us view it as a golden opportunity, a kind of booster rocket to propel the next generation forward, or to support various organizations that have a special place in our hearts. Certainly, one of the biggest challenges regarding estate planning is that we want our beneficiaries to be good stewards of what they receive. Given this intention, we take the time necessary to craft an estate plan that will consider that goal and then plan accordingly. To illustrate my point, I would like to share a story about a man named Antonio who had two sons. As a fifth-generation vineyard owner in Tuscany, Italy, Antonio dreamed about the day when he would pass on his vineyard business over to his sons. So he made it a priority each day to teach his sons every aspect of the family business. Each day, Antonio took his sons into the vineyard to inspect each vine for good, porous soil, along with the cordons, canes, and spurs to ensure they were properly trimmed and free of disease. As they journeyed throughout the vineyard, Antonio praised God for his many blessings of perfect soil, just the right amount of rain, along with the right blend of warm sun and humidity that produced award-winning wines each year. The years passed quickly, and finally the day arrived when Antonio knew it was time to get his estate plan in order. No sooner did he begin, when Antonio had an overwhelming sense that his sons might reject the hard work that was the stock and trade of the owning a vineyard. Finally, unable to resolve his problem, Antonio prayed, asking God for wisdom and counsel to help him create just the right estate plan that not only would enable his sons to continue the family business for another generation, but also to give his sons a heart of gratitude for God's countless gifts that were necessary to sustain that vineyard. Trusting in God's infinite wisdom, Antonio finally completed his estate plan. A short time later, Antonio knew his time had come, so he called his sons to his bedside to settle his estate. Antonio explained, The day has arrived for me to give you all that is mine. Since I love you both equally, and this vineyard would not survive if torn apart, I decided to bury a priceless treasure at the base of one of the vines. The treasure is worth more than a mountain of gold, and when you find it, you will recognize it. I leave the outcome of my estate in God's hands. Therefore, the first son who discovers this treasure will inherit my entire estate. Both sons complained, Father, you have thousands of vines. If what you say is true, tell us which vine has the buried treasure, 
and we shall dig it up and share it equally. Their father was unmoved in his decision. I promise you, the treasure is worth more than a mountain of gold, and the first son who finds it will inherit my entire estate. After Antonio spoke those prophetic words, their father closed his eyes for the last time. One son began to swear, complaining that his father had lost his mind to play such a nasty trick on them. The other son thoughtfully tried to reason with him, saying, Let's both search for the treasure and share it equally when we find it. Not on your life, said the first son. If you think I'm going to waste my precious time digging all that dirt just to satisfy my father's sick joke, you're sadly mistaken. And with that, the son packed his things and left the vineyard in search for a life of ease and good fortune. Now alone, the other son grieved the loss of his father and his brother. Yet he still believed his father's words. So he began the daunting job of carefully digging around the trunk of each vine, hunting for that mysterious hidden treasure. As the days and weeks passed, the son continued to dig around each trunk, still unable to find that elusive treasure. By the end of the summer, the son was exhausted as he had dug the entire vineyard without success. In his weariness, the son wondered if his father had played a cruel joke on both he and his brother just before the father died. In the course of time, winter came, then spring, followed by another beautiful summer. And then it happened. To his utter amazement, the son looked out over the vineyard and saw the promised treasure. As far as the eye could see, the grapes overflowed the vine spurs, and the rich color assured him the crop was bursting with the very best grapes ever. The son had never seen such a bountiful crop in his entire life. And then he remembered and smiled as he finally understood his father's words. Dig around each vine, and you will discover a treasure that is worth more than a mountain of gold. With a grateful heart, the son raised his eyes to heaven and praised God for the good soil, the perfect mix of sun and rain, the bountiful crop, and the priceless gift that his father had given to him. My brothers and sisters, at many levels, Antonio's story is a reflection of today's gospel. As we are transported back in time 2,000 years, to witness Jesus and his disciples celebrate the Passover meal that we call the Last Supper. It is a scene that occurs just hours before his crucifixion, as Jesus prepares to settle his estate by transferring his church to the care and stewardship of his apostles, his priests, for future generations. And just like Antonio, Jesus expects them to be good stewards of his church. So he places a condition that will determine its outcome. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Do this, and I will ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit. I promise you, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you and be with you. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. That promise became reality on that first Pentecost, when the church was born, and now it continues in us, who live in this precise time of salvation history. Talk about receiving a treasure that is worth more than a mountain of gold. God, the Holy Spirit, is alive in each of us who are baptized in the faith. Surely, had the Holy Spirit been the only gift that Jesus gave to us, that reality alone is reason enough to praise God every single day of our lives. But there's more. Scripture also tells us that the Holy Spirit showers us with his heavenly spiritual gifts. Gifts such as wisdom, knowledge, counsel, understanding, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. Scripture also mentions gifts of healing 
exorcism, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. As we cooperate with the Holy Spirit in the use of his gifts, our lives will increase in the virtues of prudence, justice, temperance, and fortitude. And the evidence that these gifts are truly from the Holy Spirit, rather than mere human origin, is the good fruit that results. Fruit that includes faithfulness, generosity, chastity, goodness, gentleness, kindness, joy, love, modesty, patience, peace, and self-control. Our combined gifts empower the Church of St. Luke, to continue the work of Jesus by proclaiming the good news, searching out the lost, offering healing to the sick, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, sheltering the poor, visiting the imprisoned, increasing vocations, and revealing God's love to those who the world would dismiss as having no perceived value in society. As I look out and see each of you who are present here today. I can attest to the fact that the Church of St. Luke is a vineyard that is bursting with good fruit. Fruit such as the St. Vincent de Paul Society, CCD Catechists, Mission Outreach in Africa, RCIA, the Prayer Show Ministry and Teen Group, altar servers, choir, cantors and musicians, readers, Extraordinary Ministers, Sacristan, Marriage and Baptism Preparation, First Holy Communion, Confirmation and Baptisms, Reconciliation, Annulments, Project Rachel, The Center in Asbury Park, Supportive Animal Shelters, The Rosary Altar Society and Rosary Makers, Nursing Home Outreach, Homebound Visits, Adult Faith Formation, Evangelization in Media, bereavement support, hospice and community volunteers, fundraisers, plus over a dozen weekly masses, along with countless other gifts that maintain our church, count the collections, prepare our bulletins, and even launder the mass linens. Even our new parish center bears good fruit by accommodating over a dozen support and counseling groups each week as a direct result of your financial sacrifice. All in all, it is a breathtaking list of spiritual gifts producing a bounty of great fruit, and it is a glowing testimony to all of you who work to make this a generous parish, sharing our time, talent, and treasure. And so today, I began my homily with a story about Antonio and his two sons. Indeed, Antonio's story is actually a modern-day parable to help us recognize and appreciate the priceless gift that Jesus offers to each of us in the great Feast of Pentecost. There is, however, a condition. Like Antonio's sons, we are free to make a choice. We can be like that first son who heard what Jesus required and rejected it in favor of worldly pleasures, telling God we're just too busy for him right now, or we don't have any skills or talents to do anything useful in the church. Or we can be like that second son who responded in faith, fully confident that our Lord's promise is trustworthy. Pray God that we begin each day asking the Holy Spirit to help us, to empower us with his spiritual gifts, and most importantly, to enlighten our hearts, to use those gifts to continue the mission of the church building the kingdom of God that Jesus entrusted to our stewardship in this time of salvation history. So that, one day, when we see Jesus face to face, he will welcome us with those precious words, Well done, good and faithful servant. Now enter into the kingdom my heavenly Father has prepared for you.